All right, we're back. We're on page five, notes 10 of Calc C, and we're talking about a Taylor series, not just Taylor polynomials. Um, and I don't know, I think we pretty much know everything about them, so we're just going to do some practice going, going forward here. Um, virtually guaranteed that if you take, well, okay, so last year the AP exam was nuts, right, because of COVID, so it was like 40 minutes long, and who knows what happened. But uh, standard AP exam virtually guaranteed at least one question that is almost totally focused on series. And then sometimes they sneak in uh, a little part somewhere here and there. It's on multiple choice. But in particular, uh, FRQ is definitely a free response. FRQ definitely going to be there. So uh, let's go way back to uh, 1971. I don't know. Uh, and see if we can do this. So first three non-zero terms in the Taylor series for cosine of x about x equals pi over 2. So this is different, right? We're not just doing like uh, cosine of 5x, which doesn't shift the center, uh, cosine of x cubed, which doesn't shift the center. This needs a center of pi over 2. So we're going to do the table. We're going to make a table um, and then see what happens from there. And then do I need, I don't know. Uh, glancing over those, I don't know what else I need. So let's see. Uh, make a table here. We need n and then the nth derivative of x and then we're also going to need the nth derivative at pi over 2. All right so test not really a test but like kind of checking our unit circle knowledge. One, two, three. First three non-zero terms so we're going to need uh, probably a bunch. So cosine is the original. Cosine of pi over 2 is zero. Um, negative sine I like to just do the derivatives so that I can like check them a couple times. And sine, cosine. Uh, so every sine we hit will give us another non-zero term. So let's go one more. Derivative cosine is negative sine. So this will be uh, the sine of pi over two is negative is one. So negative one, zero, positive one, zero, negative one. All right. And then uh, just write it, right? So it's cosine of x is approximately. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in the zero terms so that I don't mess up the pattern. You don't need to do that, obviously, but uh, I do. X minus pi over two to the first one factorial zero. Uh, that's squared plus one x minus pi over two. That'll be cubed. 3 factorial, um, that's the fourth, and then it'll be 1 x minus pi over 2 to the fifth over 5 factorial. Okay, not bad. So I'm going to, uh, I don't know, I was going to rewrite it without the zeros. It doesn't really make a difference. It shouldn't. I'm going to copy and paste. What am I going to do? I'm going to, oh, you know what I'll do? I don't know if you know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to copy and paste. Then I'm going to apply apply the eraser here, and then uh, pick up some stuff and and kind of compact it. This is definitely cheating as far as like a writing contest goes. There, I believe those are our three non-zero, our first three non-zero terms. Um, and that's all the questions. What is the interval of convergence? So this is kind of annoying. Um, well, is it because all we're doing, we're doing a, a so we're writing a series for um, cosine essentially, and we know that that converges for all x. We need to do the ratio test, or can we just say uh, since this is cosine, um, a series for cosine, it definitely converges? I think we should probably do the ratio test. That's disappointing. I mean, it's going, it's going to converge for all x anyway. But uh, so, what's the nth term? Let's go up here and see if we can generalize this. So I think the nth term, there's going to be a negative 1 to the n, an x minus pi over 2 to the 2n plus 1, and then a 2n plus 1 factorial. And we start at n equals 1. No, we don't. We start at 0. So if we start at 0 to make it negative to begin with, we're going to have to do plus 1. OK, so 0, 1, yeah, this is, this is the nth term. Let me say this is a sub n. Uh, all right, so we need to do 
the limit as n approaches infinity. I'm not really 100% sold on the fact that I need to be doing this, but when in doubt, and also, I mean, I already know the answer, so like, not it's not really the worst thing. Oh, I forgot the, in my mind, I'd already canceled out because of the absolute value. I already like canceled out the negative one. Negative one to the n plus two, and then this will be two n plus three factorial. Uh, 2n plus 1 factorial. So you can already see there's going to be a 2n plus 3, a 2n plus 2 left over. So uh, in the denominator, so this is definitely, definitely all reals, which we suspected I was pretty confident of, but I didn't want to, didn't want to not do it right. So this will give me the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of x minus pi over 2. Well, it's actually squared, so you don't really need the absolute value, but whatever. And then 2n plus 3, 2n plus 2, and then 2n plus 1 factorials cancel. 0, less than 1 for all x. So interval of convergence is uh, x is an element of the reals, which we knew because it's just cosine, but like, you know, what are you going to do? Um, all right, so the next question, use the first two non-zero terms to approximate cosine of pi over 2 plus 0.1. So this seems like, oh my god, this is going to be annoying. It's less annoying than you think because, uh, or maybe it's as annoying as you think, because when you plug in pi over 2 plus 0.1, the pi over 2 and the minus pi over 2 cancel every time. So that happens every time. So now I feel like I should just use a different color for all of them. So the cosine of pi over 2 plus 0.1 is going to be approximately. So what is it? It's negative uh, 0.1 over 1 factorial. And then plus 0.1 cubed over 3 factorial and a minus 0.1 to the fifth over five factor, nope, two non-zero terms, don't be silly. Okay, so we get that. Um, estimate, the accu estimate the accuracy. So I don't want to do Lagrange, although we could do Lagrange, right? Because we did third degree, and so we used three derivatives, we need the fourth, we need the Maximum, I'm just going to use one for m. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead, because it's actually going to be more accurate, I'm going to use the alternating series error. So I will say that at a uh, new color, I guess. We're doing a different color for every problem. Um, at x equals pi over 2 plus 0.1, uh, our series alternates as terms that decrease in magnitude would limit zero. And therefore, uh, therefore is a convergent alternating series. Like, do you need to write all that? I don't know. Error is less than the magnitude of the first term left off, which is, we accidentally wrote it, uh, it's 0.1 to the fifth over 5 factorial. So that's how accurate we are. We are, we are within 0.1 to the fifth over 5 factorial. Think about how, we're very close. We're like basically right there. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I want to, I'm just going to do this one. This problem's weird. I can't, this would never be on, on the exam now because like there's nothing to do. Like write the first four terms and this is just geometric. So f of x equals uh, one plus two to the first, x to the first plus two squared, x squared, two cubed, x cubed plus dot 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 plus two to the n, x to the n plus dot dot dot. That is only true if the absolute value of x is less than one half, because the absolute value of 2x has to be less than one. 
Interval of convergence. Uh, okay, so f of x, we already did this, converges for the absolute value of x less than one half because uh, I, don't, I don't like using it. I like to use, I like to say it, but like you shouldn't because f of x is geo with r equals 2x. Okay, done. Um, this, so this, I, I like kept this question the way it was historically written because I thought it was really interesting. It said error not exceeding one per cent. So like one over a hundred is what it's saying. But I thought that was really interesting that back in 79, someone could read that and be like, what? One over 100. We want the error to be less than that. So if X is... It's interesting because I feel like this, these are the Taylor series notes, but like all the questions, all the error is uh, alternating because if it, if it can alternate, you should use that. So we would need to, all right, I'm gonna find the series for uh, f of negative one fourth. So f of negative one fourth is gonna be, you know, I'm gonna do like, this is a weird way to do it, but like, I wanted to get the nth term like right. So I'm gonna take this, I'm just plugging in negative one fourth. So that's two to the n. So it'll be negative one to the n, two to the n over four to the n. Four to, so that's uh, negative one to the n and then just one half to the n. One half to the n, negative one, oh, you know what? It's a, well, it's negative one half to the n. Is that the way we like to write that? I don't know. My brain, I don't know. Uh, negative one half to the n. Okay, so that's that's what the series simplifies to. So this is a convergent alternating series. So if we want to be correct to within one over 100, we need to know the first power of two basically that is, um, that is okay, I got this. So uh, two to the fifth is 32. I should probably just memorize more, but two to the sixth is 64, two to the seventh is 128. Okay, so um, A sub seven is, uh, let's say the absolute value of A sub seven is one over 128. So that would be the error. So that's the first term that is greater than one over 100. And then, uh, oh wait, not exceeding, not exceeding. Yeah, 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 okay. Cause one over 64 is bigger than one over 100. So it would exceed it. So one over 128. So since that's the first term, since a sub seven is first term with magnitude greater than, less than, come on. We'll use uh, a zero to a six, therefore seven terms. So it's kind of annoying because it's like, a, so a sub seven is, you're only going up to a sub six, so people tend to be like, oh, six terms? No, because you started at the zero terms. You need seven terms. Uh, all right, not my favorite problem, but uh, I think we did it, and uh, I hope you found that useful. And I'm gonna be back in the next video to do some more, so I will see you there.